Hello, we are back finally again with Honkai Star Rail. This time around, with the new update which came out today. And wait, not <laughs> have a control power up. Um, where we're actually seeing well i guess like the 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 update is called farewell panacone so will we see a farewell to panacone or not <laughs> and also uh, a bit of a focus on firefly as soon as she's out as a new character I already tried rolling for her but decided to not get her i do want her because also uh, like this combat kit looks really nice to use Quite straightforward, but also quite powerful. And well, it also has been like talks about her, um, like having to go through three deaths, and I'm expecting her third death to be coming up in this story um, part, since like the first death was when she got like killed, quote unquote, by Dormancy and got teleported away to what was the area called again mm, let me check uh oh wait i'm w different wrong map <laughs> i had a twin flux brief it was um her second quote-unquote death was when we actually managed to escape like um in us a dream like the dream of order and kind of went into like the realm between dreams and reality there firefly used her second death there to help our companions to actually break out of like the order's dream so we could actually take care of uh sunday so yeah, what would the third one be? Also, what will Sparker do with her weird buttons she distribu distributed throughout Panacone to various kinds of characters? I'm still really like curious about that part, and I'm expecting Haven it will be coming to play now. Every touch. Every moment is like a thorned rose. I'm okay, that's just felt a bit weird, but okay. Uh, so yeah. Let's actually check it out. I actually go back into the room for me. Oh no. March wants us to wake up. Uh, what? Are you okay? Can you hear me? I didn't hear a peep from your room, and it really freaked me out. I would just say for my butt. What the hell? What is that? Is that a saying I don't know about, or what is much going on about here? Mm, am I dreaming, or is conversation? Besides, like a sun frying out, but I guess this is the deja vu. It's just up hey, making a big I was seriously worried when you didn't respond. Ah, oh, thank goodness. The order's dream is over. Finally. Even though it's been a day, I still break into a sweat when I think about it. Our trailblazing expedition almost ended in Panacone. I'm so jealous that you got a good night's sleep. I was traumatized and too scared to even close my eyes i thought if i fell asleep i'd never wake up again i said um true what did happen to just tell around did you actually have did you actually it's ever see it like directly the stellaron was sealed while you were sleeping huh. the ordinary people in panacone have no idea what happened they just feel like something's missing from their memories. Interesting. The family's official statement was like, The Charmony Festival was attacked by an unidentified Stellaron and came to a halt. 
After all, you can't just reveal the truth about the order. They like picked up an easy picked out an easy excuse for that, but okay. Now all the major lineages, except for the Oak family, are dealing with the aftermath. The family has invited the crew to the Radiant Feldspar as witnesses for an important meeting. Everyone's waiting for you, so hurry up and pack. We're leaving as soon as you're ready. Okay. I already have a lot of meetings at work. Now I also have to do a meeting here. Come on. <laughs> <sighs> After all this craziness, nothing is better than staying safe in reality. True. Are you too heavy? I ever heard about a radiant fells, but I think it's just will be another area. Will it's it? a massive airship, and it's awesome. I heard it's never shown to the public. Only VIP guests of the family get to board it and enjoy the breathtaking views of Panacone. Oh, is it the airship you see in like Boot Hill's character trailer where it's like causing mayhem on that ship and actually like blowing it up? <laughs> the Iris family sent us a bunch of souvenirs. Fruit baskets, plus this fancy button model after you're back on your feet you can enjoy them all we are pretty much celebrities on the planet of festivities now aren't we button model don't tell me it's one of sparkle's buttons the stellaron was sealed while you were sleeping the ordinary people in Penacony have no idea what happened they just feel like something's missing from their memories hmm. The family's official statement was like, The Charmony Festival was attacked by an unidentified. Now, all the major lineages. Wait, uh, did I. Why didn't feel like I did already, that already? Why the sudden interest in that? Well, I was dragged into the sweet dream. I felt a cold tentacle diving into my memories. But. Something else was there. So the tentacle suddenly disappeared. And then... Hmm. I dreamed about stuffing my face with delicious food and going on a shopping spree. Sunday didn't seriously believe that was the life I wanted, right? Ugh, breaking free from that cheesy illusion was just a piece of cake. That's an interesting bit of information. So I'm guessing there is some kind of lock on her memories, which even Sunday couldn't get to. Where well, I'm guessing like the Garden of Recollection has a hand eh? uh, on that, since we had like a character quest with Marsh, where like the Garden of Recollection actually tried to prevent her from like remembering her past, and actually gave us like warnings about uh, finding it out. Before we board the ship, so let's catch up with everyone at Dream Jolt Hostelry. Alrighty. Oh, cutscene. How extravagant. Just like Epsilon. How was it? Did it live up to your dreamscape expectations? I mean, we watched kind of cutting the entire time, but like the kind of so, so it would look like it would be a more cinematic cutting there for a moment, so which it was not. Like Epsilon, I'm guessing Epsilon is another planet they went to and caused some trauma there. You already asked that when we first got here. <laughs> you said no back then but after all this madness i'd say you've grown fond of it but just a heads up you're still on the bloodhound family's wanted list so keep a low profile oh good to know for this time it's firefly in the picture not sam 
that's gotta be a whole new experience for you, right? Indeed. In Kafka's words, that's also a missing part of my life. Still, it'd be quite inconvenient if I can't move freely. Could you help me out, Silverwolf? <laughs> I knew you'd say that. Don't worry. I've hacked all the systems and left no trace. I'm not surprised. Don't do anything that may draw attention and don't talk with guards. They might recognize you. Keep these two points in mind and you can go wherever you want unbothered. It's all the same deal as always, to be honest. Just don't do anything that draws attention. And yeah. That's mostly it. <laughs> Thank you. Did you think we'll be out for it though? No problem, Miss Samuel. <laughs> I love this fake name. Now that we're done here in Panacone, what will you do in your free time? I hear the Genius Society is here. How about we go stir up some excitement? <laughs> Well, you know, my script isn't over yet. I didn't bring you back to hear an answer like that. Don't worry. The script says that I'll experience three deaths, but also receive an unforgettable reward on the planet of festivities. Mm -hmm. How will I know if I don't try? All possibilities exist until the outcome actually happens. Right? You may not realize it, but you have a bad habit. Whenever you seem to be asking a question, you've already made up your mind, and no words will dissuade you. <laughs> I guess that's a thing Firefly does. I actually didn't notice it that much, but if Silver was saying so. I mean, it was like this in this case, and uh, in some previous cases as well, actually. So, yeah. It also is like a weird habit to every day actually like ask for questions that you already like m at least made up your mind and already got your own answer for yourself. Anyway, Kafka asked me to pass on this message. If you see anything fabulous in Penicone, get one for me too. Just swipe my card, you know the pin. <laughs> she okay. didn't specify anything, but I guess she means a dress, coat, sunglasses, or something else. You know better about fashion than I do. Sure, I'll keep an eye out. There's tons of options at OT Mall. <gasps> do you think she'll like trinkets, like uh, hair accessories or brooches? Those sound more like something for young girls. Maybe you should keep them for yourself. Is she implying that Kafka is like really old? <laughs> okay, Silver Wolf. And I was surprised like this conversation is so kind of wholesome. Unexpected from like Silver Wolf and like kind of like just casually checking uh, chatting to each other like as if they would be just casual friends after like like after high school in your free time or something like that or college or whatever oh by the way blade didn't explicitly say it but i think he was trying to say something like temptation will show up again in panacone <laughs> he's always so subtle with his words got it he was just worried about me relax silver wolf you know me. I won't do anything crazy. I just want to wander around and see more of the world for myself. <gasps> I want to buy some oat cake rolls. I've had a cake roll every day since I arrived in Penicone, from the first day to the last. I really like this whole conversation of this too. <laughs> but today, I'll buy two and give you one. And if you don't like them, I'll enjoy double the pleasure. Or I can bring one to Kafka. She never refuses. Or maybe I'll give it to Blade. He'll appreciate it. 
It's actually is a side like we get to see quite rarely of like the stellar one handers of them like just being like so casually friendly with one another. Whenever we've encountered them before, it's always in like in like the most troublesome situations we have been in. Never in like such calm situations. That's not written in the script, right? But as you see, I have added new footnotes to my destiny. Oh, we are we switching to Topaz. Interesting. Welcome, Director Topaz. The family ambassadors are still inside making preparations, but the big boss hasn't arrived yet. It'll be a while before the conference starts, I'm afraid. Huh. Quite a spectacle. The family really knows how to make things look impressive. Mm -hmm. I thought they would choose a more formal and low-key location for the conference. I didn't expect them to go with a luxury airship. I don't think it's that surprising, to be honest. I've asked around. This airship, named uh, the Radiant Felspar, belongs to the Alfalfa family. This conference between the IPC and the family will have a direct impact on Penacony's future. Such an important event should have been held at it. <sighs> well, somewhere secretive in the moment of morning dew. Mm, the atmosphere here. Right on. It doesn't feel serious enough. <sighs> you would like actually like impacts everyone. There's also like something everyone should know about. At least they will have to tell everyone about it in the end anyway. At least vaguely what they are trying to plan in like what direction they want to go. If I'm right, this conference is probably just a prelude. Whoever organized it wants to assess the IPC stance beforehand. This influential figure either has their own ambitions and wants to reach a preliminary agreement, or they plan to put pressure on us to make us back off. Because of the case. Oh, your mind is always so sharp, Director Topaz. And when the big boss arrives, Please remind her to be cautious and watch out for any traps. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder, but I don't think that will be necessary. When she's at the table, it's the others who need to be cautious. I think you're talking about shade, right? Just tell everyone on our team to stay focused on their tasks and not worry about the negotiations. Oh, got it. I'll do it right away. Oh, and uh, one more thing. Don't call Miss Jade Big Boss in front of her, or there will be serious consequences. I mean, really serious. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, got it. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder, Director. Hmm. The Aviator. Ah, Nampi. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you're actually playing with Topers, I want to switch up the party a bit. Shooting mm. mm. in would be cool. Not Romani. Also, how well, how well built is the story towers? Mm. I can't see any detailed information about how the story of the towers is built. Come on. Um. I just use my own. Do anything with them? I mean, Nambi is telling me that I can do something with them, but what is the question? 
At least he's reacting to them. Was it just like we were to make us confused on purpose? I mean, if you want to join the water with your, with your other troller friends, then we go ahead. Just thank you. Is there anything down here, or can we actually move down here? Uh, nope, we can't. None of the important figures have arrived yet. <sighs> Looks like the conference won't be starting for a while. Such a bustling place. I think I'll take a little walk around. Sure. Oh, are you hungry, Numbi? Hmm, food in the dream. Uh, shouldn't taste bad, right? Hmm, potato for a Sunday. Okay, go. I can get a full stick burger. <laughs> Everyone lets out a nervous cry as the flow can't satisfy its appetite. <laughs> there, there. Don't be so greedy. Leave some for the other guests. Nambi is cute. It was just really like his footsteps when he's following us. It's just such a nice sound. How many more treasure chests do you find? Oh, free stuff. Any other near here? Yeah, actually, yes. Uh, Watch yourselves in front of the IPC. Don't you dare embarrass me. Ah, behind the. Mm -hmm. Hard work pays off. So many buttons. How many centuries would it take to press them all? That's Barker. Huh. Didn't expect those pooches to actually recycle them all. <laughs> huh? What are these? <clears throat> For your safety, please stay away from those objects. For my safety? Are these buttons something dangerous? Not exactly. Lately, there's been a prankster in the sweet dream who's been handing out strange button devices to anyone he meets. According to those involved, he said something like, just press this button and all of Pentacony will explode. Luckily, no one believed him. Still, the Bloodhound family collected these buttons just to be on the safe side. Hmm, is it anyone actually tried pressing? What will happen if you press it? Hasn't anyone actually tried? Well, perhaps you don't know much about Panacone? All the guests here have one thing in common. They're terrified of death. True. Anyway, the family will deal with these things. Please, kindly keep your distance. <laughs> Sparga is telling us that, yeah, sure. Greetings, madame. What can I do for you? Hello. Could you tell me more about the Radiant Feldspar? 
I assume you are the ambassador of the IPC Strategic Investment Department. It's my honor to assist you. The Radiant Felspar is owned by Mr. Odie Alfalfa, head of the Alfalfa family. Mr. Alfalfa invested a significant amount in building this luxurious airship an Ember era ago, and it has been sailing across the 12 hours of the dreamscape ever since. Hmm. Oh, so it's owned by old Odie himself. No wonder the ship is so lavishly decorated. Indeed, Mr. Alfalfa has impeccable taste. Only the most prestigious guests are invited by the Alfalfa family to board this airship. Please allow me to continue my introduction. The Radiant Felspar had been cruising over the Sea of Dreams in Penacony for an entire Ember era. But its voyage was temporarily halted due to the recent reverberation. Awesome. Reverberation? <laughs> Such a formal way of putting it. You're really downplaying the whole thing. I apologize. Please continue. <laughs> <laughs> Following the previous reverberation in the sweet dream, the Radiant Felspar had to suspend its voyage temporarily. Thankfully, the factors that disrupted the dreamscape have been resolved. However, due to, well, certain special reasons, the Charmony Festival originally scheduled at the Panacone Grand Theater had to be temporarily postponed. Hmm. So, Mr. Alfalfa suggested relocating the Charmony Festival to the Radiant Felspar, taking this opportunity to announce the resumption of the airship's voyage. Ah, well, that would meet the family's needs and also create momentum for Mr. Alfalfa himself. Quite fitting for a legendary tycoon like him. Yeah, really trying to make the most out of the situation for himself. Thank you for explaining matters to me. Goodbye. <laughs> Hello? The talent motivation department? Again? Internal review? Will it ever end? Uh, I'm working on a major project. I don't have time to squabble with you guys. I... <laughs> Okay. The way I handled the Urillo case was approved by senior management, and all of the project logs and calls are complete. Can't you check on them yourselves? I just don't understand. Why are you so fixated on this minor case and constantly escalating it? I... Seriously, what's your purpose? Sounds exhausting. Why not just hang up? In my opinion, you handled that project quite well. A little ball of ice in exchange for the astral explosive's good Day. favor. That's not a bad deal for the department. <laughs> it's been a while, little Yelena. Ooh. I've been looking forward to working with you. Never imagined this day would come so soon. Is there trouble? You can tell me anything. Just like old times. Ah, it's been a while, Madam Jade. I'm honored to have the opportunity to work with you. Did she actually, actually drop Thomas's real name with Yelena? Interesting. And Topaz seems to quite admire her. Or even more. She definitely did quite blush a lot when she popped up. You're still so formal, aren't you? Forget about the hierarchy and treat me as your equal. No need for unnecessary titles like Madam. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it might take some time to get used to that. After all, you are a senior. Well, now that we're both members of the Ten Stone Hearts, I need you to be at your best. Especially since the upcoming negotiations leave no room for error. As sharp as you are, I'm sure you've figured out the true purpose of this conference, right? I believe old Oti has taken it upon himself to test our limits before the official negotiations between the IPC and Panacone. That's true, and it works in our favor. 
Do you know why? If we can reach some sort of agreement with old Oti beforehand, and gauge our opponent's boundaries, our future negotiations will go much more smoothly. That's the obvious benefit. Exactly. And the hidden benefit is that, as the head of the Alfalfa family, his actions suggest that the five lineages might not be as united as the Odes of Harmony would suggest. No, I don't. <laughs> as long as the influence of Harmony hasn't completely permeated their core, personal desires will always have their way. Thankfully, influential figures in Penacony haven't entirely suppressed their own desires. It's similar to the power struggles within the IPC. The supposed all-for-one philosophy shared by the five lineages. It's just a slogan now that the Dream Master has gone. Yeah, and yeah, it wasn't even like... There wasn't even like... How many wasn't even the thing that... I was kind of pushing it, but they actually made use of the aura for that. After the downfall of the Yoke family, old Oti's faction became the dominant force in Panacone. Even if we consider only the succession order, he's the longest serving and most senior among all the family heads. Yes, that's exactly why we need to handle the conference following an agreed upon strategy. It's like playing a game of chess. Where every move needs to be carefully thought out. Absolutely. The three steps of negotiation. Listen, test, and strike. That's what you taught me. Pretty clear. Although, you seem to have changed the order in the Yarilo case. <laughs> that was based on my personal experience. Oh. I, I apologize for interrupting your conversation. But the family head is ready to meet the ambassadors from the Strategic Investment Department. Time to get to work. Let's prepare ourselves and meet that esteemed supporting actor. Remember, our goal is to create an opportunity for the IPC to enter Penacony. Aventurine has already made a small opening. And you and I, we're going to tear it wide open. Of course, they want to like stir up trouble in Panacone. <laughs> Welcome aboard my ship, the Radiant Feldspar. Smart and charming ladies. Please have a seat. Let's have a pleasant conversation. Why does he look like an old, like, dwarven guy? <laughs> because they're like really like um dwarf vibes from like auto fantasy or like like strong fantasy like stuff just a bit more like less on like the handcrafty side but more on like the yeah, definitely like wealthy side. <laughs> Welcome aboard, my dear ladies. Forgive me for any lack of attentiveness that might have led to a lengthy wait outside. No problem at all, Mr. Alfalfa. It's my honor to meet you in person. You may not be aware, but... The book Odi Alfalfa, the biography, is a must-read for all Strategic Investment Department employees. Well, really bellowing out After from the get-go. To many, you are the legendary figure who single-handedly built the Penacony economy. <laughs> I expected no less from the Ten Stonehearts from the Strategic Investment Department. You're definitely skilled in the art of conversation. I always enjoy talking to smart people because we don't have to beat around the bush. We can just get straight to the point instead. Since I invited you IPC ambassadors on board, I'm sure you've figured out the topic I'd like to discuss, yes? The future of Penacony, if I'm not mistaken. 
<laughs> Precisely. Those few words represent a terribly complicated situation indeed. Oh, they do, yeah. Let's take that golden-haired guy who's not showing up, for example. He put in great effort and almost got himself killed. But what was it all for? Wasn't it eventually to create an opportunity for you IPC to regain control of the precious Astana? <laughs> the wisdom and experience you've accumulated over ten Amber Eras are truly impressive. Let's assume your assumptions are correct, Mr. Alfalfa. How would you respond to the IPC's actions? I appreciate your composure, Miss Jade. You must have witnessed much in your worldly experiences. However, perhaps you don't know much about Penacony. <laughs> Old Oti won't sit idly by when faced with a greedy wolf. I don't think anyone would. <laughs> Please, go ahead. I'm all ears. <laughs> then I'll be straightforward. I requested this meeting before the official conference to dissuade the strategic investment department from trying to lay a finger on Penacony. Oh, I don't think that would be if possible. You back <laughs> now, you can make a smooth exit and prevent the IPC from losing face during more important negotiations. One of our P-45 executives was attacked and nearly killed in the dreamscape. The IPC can't simply ignore this incident. Moreover, considering the turbulence during the Charmony Festival, Panacone's credibility has taken a hit in the public's eyes. Despite your determined attitude, the issues plaguing Panacone are real, are they not? You use the term real, Miss Topaz, but let's not forget that this is the realm of dreams. If you want to succeed here, you need ambition and unconventional thinking. Curious about how I plan to respond to the IPC? Well, I don't mind sharing. My actions will help Panacony take a significant step forward by self-listing and going public. Going public? If I'm not mistaken, you want to bypass the IPC and go public on a universal scale. Precisely. Instead of watching the IPC gnaw away at Penacony, I'd prefer to open the doors of the sweet dream to the entire universe. Hmm. Starting today, Anyone in the cosmos can become a shareholder of the land of the dreams. This is the path of harmony I'll choose. <laughs> this reform should have been implemented earlier, but unfortunately, the Oak family were a bunch of blockheads blinded by order. <laughs> Their level of intellectual flexibility doesn't even come close to an old fellow like me. Thanks to the little um, reverberation earlier, the biggest obstacle between me and my reforms has been eliminated. <laughs> It's surprising how much he's like ruining his cards, though. He's like not really trying to hide anything he's planning. The Alfalfa family will publicize the financial results of Sweet Dream Paradise so that the entire universe can see that despite the catastrophe, Penacony still holds immense potential and opportunities. And that the family remains confident in its future. Hmm. Crisis and opportunity are two sides of the same coin. So, you've been waiting for the right moment for Penacony to regain the spotlight. And if Penacony should seize this opportunity to overcome adversity, 
Even if the IPC tries to intervene, every move we make will be scrutinized by trillions of people. <laughs> now I'm convinced that you've indeed familiarized yourself with my biography, Miss Jade. So, about your next move. Please, consider it carefully. Indeed. We need some time to digest such a wealth of information. I suggest we conclude the first half of our conference, Mr. Alfalfa. Please allow Topaz and me to confer privately for a few moments, and to respond on behalf of the IPC later. <laughs> of course. Take your time, dear ladies. Hmm. The Alfalfa family had a meeting with the IPC? I got this information from a message sent by that IPC ambassador. He said it was to return the favor. It's not hard to imagine. Panacone today is pretty much like the frontier prison it once was, with external forces casting greedy eyes and the undercurrent of order lurking within. Instead of falling into a situation where they are plagued by both external and internal threats, Panacone would rather take a step back and invite the IPC to negotiate at the table, ostensibly to cooperate, but in reality, to secure more opportunities for their own survival. Well, no wonder they sought the mediation from the Astral Express. In your opinion, who should we stand behind? I don't think the followers of the Harmony are completely innocent victims in all of this. For reasons unknown, they have a strong desire to smooth things over, which leads to speculation about their motives. Yeah, but the IPC isn't cool either. I mean, we do have a few friends within the IPCs by now, and... They have been helping us out sometimes, but they've also been getting in our way a lot. I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I'm still not a fan of the IPC so far. I do quite like Topaz, and Venturin was also quite an interesting character, but... Yeah. I mean... Those two characters don't uh, don't make or break the IPC for me. They're just like individual characters within this whole big system and machinery of the IPC. So yeah, and they can even be good people in that. If either the family or IPC were to assume full control of Panacone, it would return to its previous illusory dream of hedonism and the efforts of those previous nameless would once again go to waste. That would suck. There you are. Did you rest well? I didn't disturb you since you were in a deep sleep. Hmm. After Anna's dream was shattered, the family branch from the Montour system soon arrived and swiftly took control of the situation. Most members of the Oak family fell unconscious, but fortunately, their lives were not in danger. Yeah, because they were already like part of like uh, the G Master's hive mind, right? Like, ooh, what was it called again? Uh, I forget the name. I don't mean Sunday, but the other guy, which was well, she is also like a father figure, I think. The mastermind behind the plans was confirmed to be Gopher yeah, Wood, you know. the previous dream master. Yeah, Gopher Wood. But by the time we arrived, he was dead already. He'll face a trial. As for further details, uh, the family would rather not disclose them. Ultimately, the public perceived the incident as an attack by evil forces targeting the Charmony Festival. They believe the family failed to safeguard the sweet dream. 
significantly eroding their credibility in the process. While quite different from the truth, this appears to be the outcome with the least impact. After all, you don't know who's awake and who's pretending to be asleep. Well, they'll open their eyes in the face of danger. Once the danger subsides, they'll embrace the sweet dream again. Here's a toast with three glasses of glory of the trailblaze to all of you. <laughs> what are you talking about? This is my lounge. It's good to see you all again. Although we might be saying goodbye again after this reunion. <laughs> when will sure. the Astral Express leave Panagoni? We'll stay a bit longer, but not too long. So, this is our final meeting, then? If this is a farewell, then it seems to be missing something. Music? Atmosphere? Ah, maybe a special drink to honor those who are not here. Mm, let's see. A mixed drink should be solemn, dignified, and unique. As we'll use it to pay respect to those fallen heroes. To the nameless resting in peace. And to Gallagher. It's getting up there too. Wait, how? When? <laughs> Wait, I'm confused about it. <laughs> when is Gallagher die? Or did he even actually lie, or did he not? Mm, I can actually chat with the others, then let's do that. Uh, guess what? Something weird just happened when I was on my way over here. Someone gave me a strange gift. The background is so making me like a bit. I unwrapped it and found out it was a button with a message on the back. Just press this button and all of Panacone will explode. This sounds terrifying. <laughs> just this bugger button? Of course not. Who would press something like that? Yeah, I would be curious. By the time it. I turned around, the person had already vanished. So I handed it over to a nearby hound. I heard there were many similar reports before the Charmony Festival started. Uh, I'm really worried about the future of Penacony. Hmm. Okay, who else do we have here? We're just on Hong World. Yep. It's rare for all passengers to leave the Express together during a trailblazing expedition. But for Panacone, it seems most appropriate. Given the conductor's presence, there's no need to worry about it. However, it's crucial that we soon return to inform Pom Pom about uh, the Nameless. Hmm. In my dream, the Express stopped at many places, and passengers came and went. However, the five of us were always present, and the journey seemed never ending. <laughs> Perhaps this could be a deep seated desire inside me. And uh, upon realizing this, I, uh, I knew it wasn't real. <sighs> no related records exist in the databank, but I have a theory. The hidden dangers of the Order have always been within the Harmony. And this issue existed within the family from the very beginning. However, now that more powers in the universe are aware of this secret, the situation in the cosmos uh, will become more complicated. Like I said, we'll go and see. Once we've packed everything, we should head to our next destination. Should let me check my settings a bit because recently... Recently, my graphics card has been having a bit more trouble with this game, and I also know why. 
When did the render quality get set back to 2.0? I turned it down quite a bit. For streaming, so I wouldn't have any troubles with legs. Why was it turned up again? I mean, I still have like a quite high setting, so it's no surprise that my graphics card is like um, having a little bit of trouble. But yeah, no wonder my PC has been like howling the entire time. <laughs> Uh, finally defense on Azeroth again. <laughs> okay, actually I've been wondering why, but I guess for whatever reason, my graphics settings for the game got like turned up without my consent, but hey. This trailblazing expedition has been thrilling and memorable. Hopefully we've all gained insights about ideals, paranoia, clarity, and dreams from the experiences we've had. One bird longs for the earth and the other longs for the sky. Even if Robin had to stop her brother with her own hands, she won't give up on him. However, facing punishment from the Harmony is inevitable. He will face a trial. As for further details, the family would rather not disclose them. Obviously. Since the family took up residence in Fanaconi, the Order has been hiding in plain sight under the guise of the Oak family, using the Stellaron's power to strengthen their hold on the Sweet Dream, which eventually resulted in disaster. It is the experience. That's the claim the family makes. Whether they were truly unaware of all this is a delicate matter. I doubt that. Uh, Venturine's efforts finally earned the IPC a seat at the table. As a result, a more senior representative arrived in Penaconi and initiated negotiations with the family. Which would be changed. As far as the Astral Express is concerned, the IPC will make for an invaluable ally during the negotiations to prevent Penaconi returning to its former ways. Uh, would it really be though? I mean, it won't be one-sided negotiations now, since like the family can't just like greedily act in their own interest with the IPC here, but. The IPC is also trying to greedily act in their own interests, so it's more like a war of like <laughs> their individual interests, and we are stuck in between. I'm not sure if this is a better situation for us or a worse one, to be honest. Well, it was somewhat surprising. In that dream, I returned to my home world and reunited with my long lost friends, and for some reason, Acheron resurfaced in my mind. For some reason, that's not surprising considering Acheron's um, history and her connection to Raiden May. Come on. When I realized that her conclusion was not preserved in memories, I became aware of the bitter truth. Or uh, I like the strong hinting again at like Honka Impact Bird. I've already always been like waiting for it since like well there's like actually like the connecting dot to that, but like Echo has been like um the trigger for all of this Honka Impact Bird hinting and strong connections. Which I really like. The conclusion of a journey can often be sorrowful. All we can do is to try to make sure it ends on a happy note. Ready to mix your drink? Sure. 
Yo, what happened to Gallagher? I'm actually curious about it. Is he really dead? I'm not sure. I haven't seen him since our last meeting at the lounge. Huh, okay. Come to think of it, he always did come and go quietly. <laughs> we used to discuss everything here. But every time he'd leave, I'd realize that I didn't know him at all. Such is the mystery that is Gallagher. I have a hunch. Perhaps he's already fulfilled his wishes and won't be coming back. Maybe. But let's have our trade. Before now. we start, uh, would you like to talk to your friends? We have plenty of time. Already did. All right, as you wish. Huh. I think I have an idea about what drink to make. Would you like it bitter or sweet? It's up to you. Choose the flavor that suits you best at this moment. Why do I only have the choice between bitter or sweet? I would prefer something more sour or fruity, to be honest. Um, let's go with a more bitter one. I Here's guess. Bitter Dreams, the least popular drink in this bar. It's bitter and sour. <laughs> Just like the harsh realities of life. Not a bad choice. Let's start mixing. <laughs> we are going back to this mini game again. Uh, let's do a small class. Uh, Ask two times. Drinking soda. Words always fall short. If you want to bring closure to past events at this lounge, there's no better way than mixing a drink. Blend all your memories and emotions together and stir them well. Through the filter of time, what remains in the glass is something to savor. Hmm. Well, it's done. Here's to the nameless resting in peace and to my friend Gallagher. Death is a bitter truth but what you did will be remembered by history. We're not accepted by the outside world, so we've gathered here. And one day, our souls will return to the same place. Cheers. Come by. I actually would, I actually would like gin tonic right now. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with like a tasty vocal gin. Mm. Okay, guys, let's make our way to Radiant Fels Bar. I'll wrap things up soon. Let's meet at the Ath Pool in the stern. Sure. What have been up so lately? <laughs> My secret for now. Of course, Emiko. Of course. Why are we so secretive? Oh, are you leaving? Well, oh, then take this with you. I've mixed more of this last special drink for you. <sighs> the past shouldn't be forgotten. So I hope it brings back the flavors of Panacone. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure it'll leave a lasting impression. <laughs> If you happen to run into Gallagher, make sure he has a sip too. I know his tastes, and he'll be thrilled. All right, enough with the heavy stuff. You guys have important things to take care of, so let's not dwell on things. All right, all Whether right. Whether it's the Astral Express or Panacone, there's still a long journey ahead. So let's lift our spirits, guys. And embark towards our tomorrows.
Well, you're actually playing this trade now. Old Oti is a tricky opponent. I didn't expect him to take the risky step of going public at such a critical moment for Panacone. Indeed. He's definitely bold. It's that kind of boldness that made him the Odi Alfalfa he is today. Still, the outcome is uncertain. Shouting loud doesn't necessarily carry any weight. What about the phone call I asked you to make, Topaz? Hmm? Ah, they agreed. But it'll take some time before they arrive. Just as it should be. The sweet dew should be served after the bitter poison. Huh. <laughs> Looks like we'll be skipping the exchanging apples step this time around. <laughs> now that we're dealing with a greedy merchant, a simple apple wouldn't make a difference. Well, I guess I included myself in that remark, too. <laughs> now I'm a bit curious, Topaz. Do you think Panacone is a quality asset? Hmm. Yes. Despite its recent calamity, Panacone remains a top quality asset within the cosmos. With uh, good credit, lucrative potential, and uh, promising prospects. Well, that's obvious. But what I truly wanted to know is... This project is obviously too bland for your taste, isn't it? <laughs> that's true. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for Venturine. Hmm. Okay. But despite that, you trust him. You even entrusted him with a cornerstone. Something as precious as life itself to finish this gamble. Uh, are you not in the same boat, Miss Jade? Without us playing along, your Jade Stone wouldn't have made it across the border so easily, allowing you to see all desires that flow through dreams to gain a bargaining chip in negotiations. <laughs> That's why I'm willing to stake my Topaz Stone to cover for you. <laughs> it's like one big elaborate game of chess. Once that kid sets his mind to something, nothing can stop him. Not even fate. Well, at least he's still alive, and that's the best outcome. Chase seems to trust him quite a lot, actually, surprisingly. At least from, like, eventually we uh, perspective, which we've, like, come to know Jade from so far, yeah, it seems more like, um, you don't like she's been using him, like, a toy, I guess, but... She actually seems to put like quite a lot of trust in what Evangeline is doing. <laughs> Looks like uh, we've strayed off topic, Miss Jade. Should we discuss our next steps? No need. I'll go it alone. Meanwhile, you can go greet our honored guest and wait for my message. Okay. Is that Robin? She's also here on the Radiant Felt's bar. Of course she has a whip. Why am I not surprised that she has a whip? Actually, no, it's, this is... Yeah, it's a whip, but it also looks a bit like a kind of snake blade. At least it has like some spikes to its side. Of course, there's also birdies here. Greetings, Miss Robin. I didn't expect to meet you here. Miss Jade? Greetings. The opening ceremony for the Charmony Festival has been moved to the Radiant Feldspar, so I'm here making some preparations. How about you? Have you spoken with Mr. Alfalfa? I'm actually on my way to meet him right now. Do you know him well, Miss Robin? Unfortunately, I've never met him. I've only heard a few comments from the former head of the Oak family. Mr. Alfalfa is respectable when it comes to business. But in other respects, I can't say the same. Hmm. Hmm. Where do you think the future of the planet of festivities is headed? 
I believe the sweet dream will see its rebirth. Just like the Radiant Feldspar resumed its voyage. The Harmony needs a new direction. Only by bidding farewell to the past can we actually sail into the future. There are no permanent allies or everlasting enemies. So let's both take what we need from this deal. Naturally. I'm looking forward to your performance. See you at the festival. See you later, Miss Jade. Hmm. Interesting. Hello, birdie. Yet, uh, uh, there's another treasure up here. Hmm. Not exactly eye catching. Uh. Uh, any other treasure I can grab? Oh, no. Doesn't look very good. Thank you for your patience, Mr. Alfalfa. Let's continue our discussion. <laughs> Figured out something already, Miss Jade? Hmm. But where is Miss Topaz? Topaz has something else to take care of. You'll be seeing her later. Talks can still continue between the two of us. Is it just me, Miss? Your tone sounds very different now. <laughs> I need to Obviously. set a good example for my junior. It's not a good habit to be too loose-lipped during negotiations. Right? Now we can speak frankly and openly. Do you believe what I said, Odi? You're not the only merchant who has seen the changes in the cosmic market over the past ten Amber Eras. Interesting. <laughs> now that's interesting. Good. It's good to be straightforward. Openness and transparency are my things. So, tell me. What's your next move? Unfortunately, I'd like to speak the harsh truth before laying out my plan. <laughs> Let's cut to the chase. First, your plan won't work. Penacony has no way of sidestepping the IPC and going public. Oh. Second, you can't stop the IPC from entering Penacony. We've got all the time and connections in the world to find a way in. We'll keep tearing down and rebuilding this place until the Asdana system gets used to the IPC's ways again. Now, I'm repeating your words exactly. If you don't want to be a laughing stock and have everyone gunning for you at the official conference, you'd better drop your little pie in the sky plan. Oh, interesting. Indeed. You surely have a way with words. Now, I'm curious to know what you have up your sleeve. Mr. Alfalfa, let's not forget that the IPC controls the biggest interstellar publicity platform. More than half the news networks in the universe take their orders from us. The moment news spreads about Penacony going public, trillions of customers will immediately receive a message like this. The family's protection for Penacony has expired. Any mishaps in the dreamscape could result in permanent brain death. Well, they're like really like threatening him now. This is like a, this is like one of the things because <laughs> why I don't like the IPSC. Care to guess? How many ways we have to turn alfalfa credits into worthless junk within a measly 24 system hours? <laughs> With the entire cosmos keeping a close eye on Penacony, I assure you, it won't be too hard. Is the entire cosmos actually logging? Because I don't think Bellabog is actually caring much. At the moment at least they have to deal with their own troubles. 
You really think you can pull that off? Even from Pier Point, as distant as it may be, I'm more than capable of keeping you on a tight leash. However, if you agree to give up that half-baked plan to go public, the IPC will assure you that will never jeopardize the interests of the family heads under your leadership. After all, we also need allies here in Asdana. The IPC can assist Penacony with financing, starting by acquiring 30% equity shares. With our financial support, stabilizing and rebuilding Penacony will be a piece of cake. 30% equity, you say? Who can guarantee you won't want more? future <laughs> that's the brilliant part of it all the answer is simple no one there are no guarantees it all hinges on self-awareness and mutual respect however the board of directors will consider the interests of the family heads to some extent you're a smart merchant old Odie isn't the whole purpose of this elaborate game to showcase your business acumen and seek more benefits for the family? It benefits us if we both take a step back. And if that's not enough for you, I'm pretty sure that another goal of making Penacony go public is to expand the influence of the Planet of Festivities and attract more customers. I understand your concern, and I have a solution for that, too. Fine. Now I see your sincerity. As the head of the Alfalfa family, I don't think I have any reason to refuse your offer. However, as their chosen one, I still need one final answer. Go ahead. I'm listening. When I was a child, I heard the adults recite the tale of the ancient Amber Era, about the ascension of Shipe, the Harmony, and the downfall of Enna, the Order. Just a score, you know. The Order and the Preservation used to be close in ancient times. So, why does the IPC, as a follower of the Amber Lord, seek collaboration with the family instead of aligning with the Order. Interesting. The answer is simpler than you think. It's all about credits. Everyone's favorite thing and the universally recognized currency among the stars. The IPC has the power mm. to perpetually ensure their value. With each new world integrated into the credit system, the IPC adds another building block to its cause. Eventually, all exchanges, capital, and businesses will operate within a unified monetary system. By then, all planetary developments will be recorded in accounts with well-defined values and the ability for exchange and circulation. And the heart of everything will be Klepoth's credit. Huh. Ah. And then the IPC will be able to exert influence over everything. Yeah, of course it will, and that's what I do not like. <laughs> to be honest, that's an outcome I do not like. Our intention is to establish enduring preservation. So I'm sure you can understand. This universe doesn't need two types of order. Hmm. <laughs> well said. Now you've convinced me. All right. Tell me your solution. Let's see if we're thinking the same thing. Then let's continue our conversation. Please, Topaz, invite Sweet Dew to join us at the table. Hmm, Himeko. Thank you for your presence, Miss Himeko. Please allow me to introduce her to you, Mr. Alfalfa. This is Miss Himeko from the Astral Express, one of the future shareholders of Penacony. Huh. 
<laughs> Wait, when did that happen? When did Himiko make plans to become one of the shareholders of Panacone? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> huh. I mean, it's good because it gives like the trail blaze um, the possibility to intervene in anything and like uphold uh, the interests of like the nameless which were here before but when did that happen i've heard so much about you mr alfalfa it's an honor to meet you as representative of the astral express <laughs> this stunning lady is the navigator of the astral express it's a pleasure to meet you i always find it so interesting because like Starry Simiko is such a big difference from like Honkai Big Fruit Simiko. There's such a big contrast between these two characters. I believe everyone here is familiar with the general contents of the proposal. After this round of financing, the IPC is expected to hold 30% of Panacone's shares. Then, the IPC will transfer 5% of that stake to the Astral Express and recommend Miss Himiko as an independent director to honor the sacrifices and contributions made by the former Nameless to the land of the dreams. You only get 5% though, this won't give us much influence. Well, okay, it depends on who the other shareholders will be and how it's all divided up, but still, 5% is not much. While this decision isn't finalized yet, we are honored that everyone here recognizes the way of the trailblaze. While the Nameless didn't embark on their journeys for fame or fortune, if this is the wish of both the family and the IPC, I will represent the Astral Express and fulfill my duty as a member of the Board of Directors. The entire crew has agreed to assist in the reconstruction of Penacony. Beyond that, in our future travels, we are committed to bringing the beautiful dreams of the Planet of Festivities to more worlds. Of course, all cooperation is based on one premise. The path of harmony in Penacony must not be distorted again. And such a tragedy must never recur. Hmm. Well, I agree with him, go there. If the five percent give us this, uh, this much power, to at least leverage this much, then well, we're fine with that. Also, just seeing like it's also kind of like maybe foreshadowing that like the whole snake image, uh, imagery with like Jade. At least we look like at her like uh, um, pictures of her skill and talent. There's a good child. Do as you're told. A lot of sn uh, snake imagery going on there. Let's repair you.
Hmm. No, this is like not terrible. Huh. God, this is a mean one. This is a really mean one. Actually, like one of the harder ones of these kinds. Is that all? Hardly worth the bother. Which is actually quite nice. I do like it if the puzzles are a bit, yeah. more, if they are a bit harder. Ah, old OT is in agreement. So the issue is settled, I presume. What about the remaining family heads? They will soon realize the situation. When old OT answered the last question. He represented more than just the Alfalfa family. When should we schedule the formal negotiations? I'll handle the arrangements. It's all up to you. I'll step back and let you handle the negotiations and take over. I won't be involved. Uh, but Miss Jade, this is... Aventurine initiated this case, and you were his project partner. If that kid hadn't overplayed his hand, I wouldn't have been pushed to the forefront. I came here today to help you sort out the toughest issue. I trust you'll be able to wrap things up quite nicely, little Yelena. Of course, there won't be any problems. And please, give Diamond my assurance. Don't worry. Diamond has always trusted us. I'll put in a good word for you and you'll have your P-45 position back in no time. Radiant Feldspar. What a fantastic ship. Now that my business is done, it's time for me to indulge in my own little hobby. What's her ah, little hobby? You want to open a Bon and Jade Exchange branch on this ship too? Opportunities like this huh. don't come around often. Just look at the guests on this ship. They're surely holding a wealth of valuable treasures. Well, <laughs> I'll take my leave. A pawn shop can't run without a boss. See you around, Topaz. Okay. I have one more question for you, Miss Jade. Hmm? Go ahead. That dose of bitter poison. I'm curious as to how you found this information. 
I didn't find the information. It came to me. It was from a lady concerned with the future of the Harmony. Robin. In return, I've agreed to help her with something, but that's for later. We can deal with it after we leave Panacone. Is she talking about Robin? I mean, uh, most likely that's who she is talking about because we had that conversation with Robin, but. Did I miss something in their conversation? <laughs> I'm feeling a bit confused. You see, that's what investment is all about. The seeds of opportunity are already sown. They only need a little bit of nourishment to take root. And then after, all we need to do is wait patiently. I feel like there was like something in the subtext that I've missed. I like the subtext of the conversation. Like right now, for example. It's just about time my final guest boarded the ship. Firefly. Of course. Sneaking in was way easier than I thought. The family's security is as lax as ever. <laughs> okay. Weird break. So, this is oh, the like Radiant Felt's bar. <laughs> Actually. So luxurious. A pawn shop that grants wishes. Is there really a place like that on the ship? I'll find out for myself if the rumors are true or not. Is that um, Jade's little hobby? Mm, we're actually having her in our, par in our party. Uh, ba -ba -bum. It's you again. <laughs> As always, there's a reward for good behavior. I tripped and fell right here. Just Ooh. She's pretty sore. Wait, I heard a bird. Sit down there. I hear it, but I don't see it. Whoa, there it is. Upside down over there. That's easy to miss. Detected, but never let your guard down. Is that him? Huh. Vanished in the blink of an eye. So the Astral Express is here too. Harmony Festival has really been postponed. I mean, that's not really surprising that we're here. Inspection complete. Nothing suspicious. By the way, there's one more thing. Mr. Alfalfa and I discussed it. I'll present a gift to the Astral Express on behalf of the family as a token of gratitude for the nameless's contributions to Pentacony. Please help me with the necessary arrangements. Right away, Miss Robin. Hmm. Can I ask you something? Oh, greetings, miss. Is there anything I can help you with? Do you know how to get to the pawn shop? Pawn shop? Ah, you must be talking about Lady Bonajade's place, right? I heard she offers uh, special services there. 
I've marked the pawn shop's location on your device. Please feel free to check it out. How quickly did you get that sorted out? Lady Bonajade. I think I've heard that name somewhere before. Was it from Silverwolf? Come to think of it, she disappeared after mentioning that she was going to meet with the Genius Society. Huh. I wonder how things turned out for her. I think we'll find that out soon enough. But I actually want to find the Victoria Places first since that's optional. If I win, your chest is mine. Who uh, said what? I was betting with you? I did. Why would we want his chest? Oh, the treasure chest in the deck. Hmm, of course. <laughs> they are still a ball of fire as ever. Sorry, but I've got to find Lady Bonajade first. Dude. <laughs> Going my way. No, but I should no, no. It's not the best time to do that. Okay. Sorry, but I've got to find Lady Bonajade first. I can't pack you up the chest. Sad. Also, just like how when we are not uh, like controlling the trailblazer, he's just like going up the chests. <laughs> Such a weird characteristic to him, but hey, why not? Uh, oh, this is a lot of this. Looks fine for me. Ah, okay. Let's look at some other areas to explore Nothing actually. Suspicious. I wanted to explore all of them eventually, but I didn't get to that already. Where's the bird? I can hear you quite clearly. Ah. 
Where's the balloon way back there? This is such a like weird thing to place there. <laughs> you could never reach it in the first place. Welcome to Bonna Jade Exchange, Radiant Feldspar Branch. How should I address you, dear lady? Just call me Samuel. Samuel, nice name. So what do you need, Miss Samuel? And what are you willing to give up in return? For life? I want to keep on living. And for Order. that, I'm willing to give up everything I have. The exact everything opposite. you have. That's right. Everything. Miss Samuel, I think you'd best turn around. It seems you're not quite familiar with the term pawn. What do you mean? I mean it literally. I sense your burning desire to live, but unfortunately, you don't have anything of equal value to offer. <laughs> Okay, a pawn shop that grants wishes. <laughs> I see. It's just a marketing gimmick. Well, that's quite a harsh accusation. I understand you may not fully comprehend what I mean, but don't worry. I'll help you understand. Go and talk to these people. They're all customers of my pawn shop. See for yourself if their wishes have come true. Once you've done that, Come back to me. I'll help you understand the true meaning of pawn and make you realize what you're missing. That Lady Bonajade feels more like a money lender rather than the owner of a pawn shop. Well, well I've got nothing we better to do anyway. I'll do as she says. Are we back to surround up by balloons? Huh? huh. <laughs> what is this? Which one should I pop? One, <laughs> two, three, four, five. Don Hung and Void Ranger Jive. Don't change the words. No, it's not the best time to do that. <laughs> Sorry. I'll catch up with you later. What are we doing? I fear for the trailblazer when we are not controlling him. What the hell? <laughs> Wait, why is there two of these here? Inspection complete. Nothing suspicious. Oh, okay. Stupid little girl, coming back to lose more money, huh? Ugh, enough talk. Mm. Let's get started. Mm. This will be our final game. I'm betting my entire fortune. Oh, a big talker, huh? <laughs> All right, let's see what you've got. Wait, why? Interesting. Why a match free type of game though?
Pretty good. One shot. I I won? I actually won! <laughs> this this can't be! You lost to me ten times in a row. How could I possibly lose to you at such a crucial moment? It's true! Lady Bonna Jade has truly blessed me! <laughs> Finally! My luck has turned for the better! Great new era for Stacy, the Master Gambler, has arrived! <laughs> okay. What should you even do though to make that happen? <laughs> I'm guessing this will be the mini game we can play here later. Which, like, the trailblazer wanted to play to get a chest. Interesting. Hey, excuse me. I was here first. Wait, we went somewhere else again. Where did we go? I feel like I want to look where the trailblazer went to see to watch her and again see is up to again. What services do you require? See that first. Where did we go? Guess we are not here. I mean, we still got to throw us up there, but okay. Here somewhere? A pleasure to meet you. Oh, okay. And uh, let's just continue with the uh, story quest. I've prepared a gift for you, Dorothy. Check this out. Whoa! What a beautiful necklace! Is it made of cymophane? It's stunning. How did you know I love jewelry made of cymophane? It has the same purple hue as the necklace my dad gave my mom. I've never told anyone about it. How did you find out, Del? So... So... Well... Will you go out with me? I will. R really? I mean, really? I never said yes before because I thought you had no idea what I liked. But this gift made me realize you were actually paying attention all along, trying to learn everything about me. So yes, I will. W wonderful. My, my wish has actually come true. So, shall we go, Dorothy? Let's go outside and enjoy the stunning views of the 12 hours. Yeah, let's go. Mm, okay. Huh. Oh, yeah, we were in this big room earlier. Hey, right. did you see that? The gray-haired one outside. <laughs> Don't look around. Just focus on your drink. Seriously, they look like a total lunatic. Is that him? <laughs> what are we doing? 
Again. Chirp, chirp. Origami bird. Hey, little birdie. Come on. Oh, calm down already. Everyone's staring at you. No, it's not the best time to do that. Why are you such a fucking I'll weirdo? Catch up with you later. What the hell? I'm not sure uh, if I approve of us being just like a total weirdo and goofball, but I. Yeah, you heard right. I've got him. He's been hiding at the moment of Soul and Pinnacone. Using a fake identity. And he even posed as a professor at Paperfold Academy. I've made a deal with the family. I'll leave the extradition related paperwork to you. How to find him? Well, let's just say I had some help from an influential figure. Don't ask for the details. 22 years. Yeah. 22 years of chasing this guy all over the cosmos. You know? Never thought it'd end up like this. Right here. Um, I'm gonna hang up for now, partner. I need to raise a glass to myself. While well, I up the phone, and a drop of fuel seeped out from his teeth, and met a constructed ice socket. Those were the teeth of an intelligent. Oh, intelligence can actually cry. Interesting. I don't feel like I'm getting. Like the suspicion that what Jade is pawning off is just information. Like it's all just like a part of a big information network. All of their wishes actually did come true. <laughs> but I just don't understand. How did she do it? And what does pawn really mean? I should go back and ask. Are we still being weird outside? Yes, we do. Oh, yes, we are. <sighs> Why not? Why? So you're back, Miss Samuel. Yeah. I found those people. And it seems their wishes did come true after visiting the Bonnage Aid Exchange. But I'm not sure what you want me to see. They all seem to be living... fulfilled lives. Not so fast. This step was just to show you that the Bonnage Aid Exchange is genuine. That I had the power to grant their wishes. And now, I'll tell you the price they paid. Del was from a wealthy family. He was head over heels for Dorothy and wanted to win her heart. So he made a deal with me. He put up his entire fortune in exchange for a gift that would impress Dorothy. Hmm. It was a piece of cake for me, thanks to my IPC connections. However, Dell will soon find himself evicted from the dreamscape because he can't afford his room. Whether he can bounce back from poverty, well, that depends on him. Let's just hope that Necklace will keep their relationship from crumbling. Then there's Stacy, a lady with a gambling addiction. She wanted some serious luck, but she had nothing to offer, so I took something else instead. I took away all her close relationships. From the moment she stepped out of the Bonajade Exchange, every casino in the cosmos would remember her name. But her parents and siblings would sever ties with her, and it would be impossible for Stacy to make any real friends again. She will accrue a vast wealth due to her good luck, but she'll never be able to use it for the people who truly matter to her. As for Detective Walker, he spent two decades chasing down a wanted criminal 
for some heinous crime. But he never caught the guy. In his desperation, he came to me. He offered his own memory system as collateral. In due time, his memories as a detective will be erased, and he will completely forget his own identity and all the sacrifices he has made. Interesting, don't you think? I fulfill people's desires and grant them favors, and soon they come back to me with even greater desires. How can she pull this all off, though? How can she give, like, a gambling addict greater luck and force all of, like, family and close friends to sabotage with her? This is, like, a thing I don't understand how she does that. I can't even understand that she can, like, um, like the one thing with the dude getting going to poverty because of buying that gift. Okay, that's understandable. But yeah, I don't understand that part with uh, with the gambler. With the Teletron, I guess, yeah, it's not that hard. When people see others' desires get fulfilled, they develop their own desires. It seems like an endless cycle, but it does have a goal. In the end, I will get what I desire from this whirlpool. And patience happens to be one of my greatest strengths. So now, do you understand what you must give up, Miss Samuel? Or should I address you as... AR-26710, a remnant of Glamoth's Iron Cavalry. Hmm. I'm not surprised. You are much calmer than I expected. Entropy loss syndrome. Truly an unjust misfortune, isn't it? The higher-ups in Glamoth implemented such a failsafe within the genes of their warriors. Just to make sure the Republic's most powerful weapons wouldn't fall into the wrong hands. As for the price, those Iron Cavalries weren't exactly seen as regular, independent humans. So there wasn't really a price to be paid. However, you are different. You're now a Stellaron hunter, a living being named Firefly. Naturally, you want to continue your existence. But with the firmament front gone, the people who know the secret and can cure the disease are nowhere to be found. Are you suggesting that the IPC has a remedy? Well, there might be a silver lining. That's all I can say for now. I see. It's no wonder you said I can't provide anything of equal value. Because nothing I own holds any meaning. So, you're going to ask me to personally restrain my partners to ensure my own survival? Unfortunately, that's not quite the case. Partners. A nice way to put it. Now I'm even more curious about the Stellaron Hunters. Each of you has your own identity and a special bond with each other. It's strong and intimate, and yet it allows for independence. Just as the Ten Stonehearts follow Diamond, you follow your own leader. I wonder what they are like, and if all Stellaron Hunters are like you. They're yeah, definitely quite a weird bunch. Traveling on the path of finality, but struggling against your destiny. Attempting to move in the opposite direction. Calling it the path of finality is such... <sighs> when you played Honkai back third, the word finality has, has such like a deep meaning now for you there, if you've like played through the story final of part one. Finality now carries such a big weight and meaning to it. So I'm always tripping over whenever they like call out the path of finality. I 
I really hope that one day, all of you will come and visit my pawn shop. I'll be waiting patiently for that day. Especially even more since like the theme you're displaying in the background is from Honkai Impact Third. Can I see this as an invitation? From Diamond to the Stellaron Hunters while keeping the IPC in the dark? Consider it more of a personal offer from myself. It doesn't represent the IPC or the Strategic Investment Department. The Stellaron Hunters have interacted with the IPC, but not the Ten Stonehearts. Our paths have never crossed. As for your offer, I can pass it along to my partners. Huh, okay. I just felt like I'm, I, uh, I missed something again. You know who I am. And you must know that my partner is keeping an eye on this room. If she wanted to, she could let the entirety of Pierpoint know about it within a few mere seconds. What drives you to take such a risk and extend this invitation on behalf of Diamond, even if it could lead to your downfall? Simply put, you and I are the same. However, unlike you Stellaron Hunters or the Astral Express, we band together merely to obtain what we want. Each of us has our own past and destined ends, and on this journey, we have been invited by Diamond to join him. This journey could be either brief or long, as each of us carries a void in our hearts that can only be filled from the outside. So, Diamond made us a promise to divide the power of the Emanator of Preservation into ten pieces and give each of us a cornerstone to fill that void. Hmm. Mortal flesh is fragile, yet my heart is unyielding like the monolith. For without this resolve, the way of preservation would fade into oblivion. Well, I'm actually wondering who you see. We do see Jade, we do see Topaz, we do see Evangeline. The cowboy looking dude... Okay, no, is that a Venturine? Yeah, no, that's a Venturine. Do I recognize any of the other silhouettes in any way? Hmm. The one is looking, again, quite similar to Ride and May. The one behind the Venturine. I'm not sure about the boy with the gun then. The other one is hooded. The other one you don't even see the face in the corner there. I'm not sure about that girl further in the background on the right. If she resembles someone I know. But the one below that, the facial features, the hairdo, it gives me again right in May vibes. So it could be like another, um, another right in May face claim, which would, which I wouldn't be surprised about to be honest. So, you understand. This pledge goes beyond a mere oath. It's our collateral in exchange for opportunities, wealth, survival, and a future. I mean, you already have another White May face claim, and we have two. We have two Pranya face claims. So, and whatever we gain from it will fortify the Stone Hearts in return, allowing us to achieve the great cause of the preservation 
when the war among the eons eventually comes. <laughs> I understand. Take your time, child. You don't need to give me an immediate answer. Like I said, patience is one of my greatest strengths. If fate turns that page, our paths will cross again. It's a shame, though, that this pawn shop can't give me what I desire. My last attempt in Penacony. <laughs> well, it ends with hope. Lady Bonajade? I've come to deliver the collaterals promised. Hmm. It turns out, the meeting to decide the future of Penacony went much smoother than expected. With little debate. Oh, the Charmony Festival's opening ceremony is starting soon. I should head down and take a look. Really? This airship has quite a few treasures. A bountiful harvest. I think a trailblazer has been like out of the loop again. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we jumping? We can't fly. Why are they talking about jumping? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Ooh, Buddha. And the Rancherine. Remember. I can take you out with just one shot whenever I choose. <laughs> oh, that'd be my honor. Don't worry, I hate cheating at the table. <laughs> you better. Ah, oh, look who's here. The great hero of the Astral Express. The most dazzling trailblazer in all of Penacony. Oh, you're here too. <laughs> Long time no see, friend. <laughs> Merely a greeting of platitudes. As long as you and I have an understanding. Well, let's set aside those under the table dealings for now, partner. Don't want to spoil the festive mood of the Charmony Festival. I agree. Now let's congratulate Mr. Trailblazer. I hear the family intends to thank the crew at the Charmony Festival. <sighs> it's a real pity I can't personally be there to witness this. Well, my job was just to give the IPC an opening. Other things aside, I think I did a pretty good job at achieving this. Well, mm -hmm. you were at Dreamflux Reef, we were actually close by wouldn't have been able to dig up so much dirty information without the help of a knowledgeable friend. But that emanator didn't pull any punches. <sighs> My body couldn't hold out too long. Otherwise, this would have been settled in a much cleaner manner. <laughs> no problem. You're punishing the wicked and eradicating evil is a top priority. Would have been strange if we sat it out. Making an entrance like that, us Galaxy Rangers are making a comeback. Reckon you'll meet quite a few followers of the hunt on your journey. Do me a favor, pass on my regards, will ya? Oh, forget it. I'm not one to beat around the bush. I've got a score to settle with a high-ranking executive fella named Oswaldo Schneider. This flamboyant fella here can help me find him. Uh, the feud between the Marketing Development Department and the Strategic Investment Department is well known across the cosmos. But what I didn't expect was the involvement of the Galaxy Rangers in this feud. <laughs> Looks okay. like things are about to get spicy. <laughs> of course he's enjoying this. Thank you. And I also hope you enjoy yourself, great hero of Pinnacony. <laughs> I'll pass. But I do hope you guys have fun. If you don't 
mind. Let's play a few rounds next time. Sure. Mm. Where are other of our companions then? Ah, Dr. Ratio. Ah, yes. I remember you. Your performance at Herta's space station was adequate, I suppose. Hmm. No wonder that gambler likes you so much. This individual is my responsibility during the trip. Hmm. Nothing more than an errand from the Office of Academic Affairs. Huh. Very well. The Charm Money Festival is about to commence soon. Uh, take advantage of this unique opportunity. A blend of work and play is essential for superior knowledge absorption. The executives of the IPC and the Guild say that we are strategic partners. Yet, from my perspective, I am invariably the teacher, and he, along with you and every other individual, is the student. Of course. From this perspective, Venturing isn't what you call an ideal student. Yet, he's also not utterly obtuse. Alas, the void within him can never be filled by talent and knowledge. <laughs> Let's hope he doesn't turn into a philosophical zombie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah, saying such a thing merely indicates that you have not truly grasped the essence of learning. The principle of balancing work and relaxation is scientifically grounded with the relevant proof process detailed on page 21 of the 31,467th issue of the academic journal Star Caesar. Acquiring knowledge aims to enhance living. Don't invert priorities like those dolts at the guild. <laughs> then you'll excuse me. What can we find? It would be prudent to look around more. Mm, Thomas is down here. Okay. my old friend it hasn't been long and yet here we are again <laughs> how are you <laughs> that's what i thought i heard you guys pulled off a big stunt cutting down the oak family in one fell swoop <sighs> such a pity i couldn't be there or else i would have lent a helping hand Look how bustling this ship is. Not bad. Someday when I'm less tied up, I plan to host a grand party on my eco ship, and you'll all be on the guest list. Sweet. Transform? What are you saying? <laughs> I, I understand now. You're referring to Aventurine's cornerstone, right? <sighs> Sorry. Compared to him, my ability is not as visual. <sighs> Guess there is no harm telling you. The abilities of the Ten Stone Hearts' as cornerstones are all different. Some can even read your thoughts, grasp your desires. So, be careful. I'm guessing it's Jay Agent. She's the one who's all about desires the entire time. Uh, now that I think about it, it was good that Branya got there when she didn't, Bellabog. <laughs> if she came any later, we probably wouldn't have ended up as friends. Hmm, I guess so. Hmm. Well, you can pick this one up. Don't forget to let your friends in on the action. Let me talk to her. Hey there. 
lively guy. Welcome to the Bona Jade Exchange. What should I call you? <laughs> My name is Sunday. <laughs> nah. What a unique name. So, mister, what do you wish for? And what are you willing to sacrifice for it? Make the new boat down to revive accurately. I want to be sick of the NPC. Oh, this is your wish. Lady Bonache doesn't even blink. You're guessing she doesn't have any sense of humor, sadly. Sounds simple enough. Very pragmatic. Then, let's discuss the cost. How is that simply enough? To fulfill this wish, the thing I need is simple. The tail of an animal. Well, it's a two-legged animal with black fur, a round head, and long ears. Oh. It's omnivorous and is prone to mood swings. Most importantly, it has mastered the human language and can communicate. She is talking about pom pom. <laughs> <laughs> Why should we give her poor Pom Pom's tail? So I'm guessing she's implying that Pom Pom still has some kind of connection to Aki Willy, I guess. Bring its tail to me as collateral, and your dreams will come true. It seems that Abona Jade is not without a sense of humor. You have to admit her skill in using dark humor is superior to yours. Hopefully they are scissors on the express. <laughs> May fate bring us together again, Mr. Trailblazer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I didn't expect anything funny out of this conversation, but this one actually quite got me. <laughs> I like this one. So, where is, like, our, uh, last one, our last optional chat? Um, let's see here. Oh, over there. Hey, excuse me. I was here. <laughs> it's Argenti. Curious. What? He's been just like a big question mark for me the whole time in Penicani. And why is he not wised? You meet again, my dear friend. Your journey of the beauty is even more elegant than mine. My most sincere regards to you. Okay, this has already been throwing me off in the story quest that he's not wised, but if he's actually our journey, why is he not wised? Okay, there's just speculations are, are there because of it.
Okay, apparently they didn't get... Okay, the JP voice acting is there, but the English one is missing. And... It doesn't look like... Hyrus has actually tried to address this issue in any meaningful way. Interesting. Okay. Uh, we meet again, my dear friend. Your journey of the beauty is even more elegant than mine. My most sincere regards to you. Sincere regards to you too, my dear friend. Even after achieving such remarkable feats, you remain humble and gentle. That is the true mark of knightly grace. I'm getting here, bugs. Hiccups. God. Bad timing. <sighs> I've heard of your valiant deed in leading others to vanquish the omen of evil, though the tale bears a tinge of regret. If an already champion beauty and justice, may it rather smile upon you. The omen of evil. If an admirer of the beauty gets lost in the pursuit of power, they risk descending into the omen of evil, a form which is neither human nor beast. Although Mr. Sunny did not cross paths with the path of beauty, his actions were no different from the omen of an evil. A lamentable soul lost on the path of righteousness, truly a matter of deep regret. Why were you not there during the final battle? I'm ashamed to admit, in a stream was too realistic. I couldn't bear to bid farewell to a fond friend who had long turned into a beast. I lingered in the illusory dream for, uh, for far too long. Her voice and smile were too vivid. I didn't pass the trial of the beauty this time, spending much time in self-reflection over my own hesitation, and I wished for a thriller to remain my beacon, a banner for me to swing from my determination for the beauty. Hope you have a fun at the festival. Thank you, may the beauty always be with you. Okay, let's actually check out each only festival. Hmm, the festival hasn't started. Let's take a quick break. Sure. Hi, we meet again. Firefly. Who's that? It's really you. I knew I didn't get the wrong person. Yes, it's just I didn't get the chance to say hello. There's still some time before the Charmony Festival starts. Do you want to chat? Sure. You walk and talk with Firefly, stopping in traffic with some more comes into view. Two murder cases, a showdown with the IPC's ambassadors, the legacy of the Nameless, and a remnant of the Order who wishes to replace an eon-created paradise with a dream. You guys even ended up shattering the dream. <laughs> it's truly been quite a vacation. It sounds more like a hard job than a vacation to me, to be honest. It's a good thing that you guys managed to overcome all those difficult problems. Congratulations! After the Charmony Festival's opening, will you guys be leaving again? <laughs> there will always be somewhere. After all, you guys are on the path of the Trailblaze. True. Why not join Before us? Before joining the Stellaron Hunters, Elio told me that this journey will tell me how to live on. That's all he said. As for the rest, it's up to me to find out. Please join us. So, I'll pay extra attention to any leads that will let me live on. <laughs> this trip to Penicone is no different. Yes, sadly I was looking in the wrong place. But I did reap some rewards. Do you know Miss Jade from the IPC Strategic Investment Department? Bona Jade Exchange belongs to her. She told me her price, but... I know. But what she wanted wasn't my answer either. Of course I want to live on. But... What fate owes me? I want it paid back, not passed on. No one else should be involved because this is a grudge between me and fate. Hmm. Speaking of which, actually, 
I feel that I still owe you a formal apology for... that matter with the performer of the Iris family. Oh, that's fine. Even Come on. the smallest of lies can turn into a betrayal as sharp as a blade. I'm sorry. Really? Then it seems what Kafka taught me was correct. To me, hiding is much easier than being honest. Yet, I still want to try expressing my emotions as any ordinary person would. It's that girl! Get moving! Arrest that criminal before the Charmony Festival's opening ceremony starts! Oh, come on! I can't believe they've chased me this far! Looks like we have to say our goodbyes. Don't worry about me, just go and enjoy the ceremony. The script hasn't reached its end yet. We will meet again. This is so unnecessary. I hope she's okay. But if it's only those two hounds again, she'll probably be fine. True, though. I'll send a message later to check in on her. Let's go attend the Charmony Festival first. Yep, okay. I guess we're still waiting, though. Let's take a seat here. Everything is settled. But there's still some time left. Maybe I should take a walk? Yeah. Forget it. I've done enough walking around already. Let's take a seat and rest for a while. How favor is messaging us? It's me, Firefly. I got all handled. Don't worry. I didn't do anything rash. I've hidden myself away. It's a pity I won't be able to see you and Miss Robbins perform. Aww. Oh, Firefly. Looks like I don't have to worry about her. Let's wait for the opening ceremony to start. Sometime later. Oh, it's Miss Robin. Robin. Hey, hey, Miss Robin. Hey, Miss hey, Robin. Hey, over here, Miss Robin. Miss Robin. She's a celebrity, all right. Distinguished guests, fellow family members, ladies, gentlemen, and friends from all over the cosmos. It's a pleasure to join you all in celebrating the grandest ceremony of the Amber Era, the Charmony Festival. Firstly, on behalf of the Penacone family's five major lineages. And on behalf of myself, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to all our guests. As you all may have noticed, this year's Charmony Festival is far from regular. Thanks to the efforts of everyone, the celebration is unprecedented in scale, with factions from across the cosmos in attendance. Not only that, the customary opening ceremony held at the Penacone Grand Theater has now moved to the Radiant Feldspar, the very airship you all stand upon. We invite you to express your warmest applause and deepest appreciation for O.T. Alfalfa, head of the Alfalfa family, for his selfless devotion to the Harmony's cause. What makes this festival so uniquely significant? As is widely known, the Can skip the opening speech? had to halt its voyage due to an anomaly in the sweet dream, sparking widespread discussion in the 12 hours. Thanks to the hard work of Penacone's internal and external factions, we've finally gotten the dreamscape back on track, just in time for the Charmony Festival. And as they say, good things come in pairs. The Charmony Festival not only celebrates this achievement, but also marks the relaunch of the Radiant Feldspar. And finally, the last reason. 
Does everyone remember the Watchmaker? In truth, the family has poured their efforts into this festival just to commemorate this legendary luminary. The father of Penacony, Mikhail Char Legwork, one of the legendary nameless who laid the foundations of Penacony. In the most bewildering times of the planet of festivities, it was he who descended from the sky with his companions, who taught us through trailblazing where freedom lies. It was also they who led the vanguard in the pioneering of the dreamscape, in exchange for what is now known as the Paradise of Harmony. It can be said that Penacony's splendid success today is deeply rooted in the trailblazing ethos the Watchmaker planted within us. Only by honoring this trailblazing spirit can we fulfill our mission and spread harmony to a broader audience. Aww, that's so nice of her. She's talking about us. That's rude, that really is nice. dream is back on track all thanks to the trailblaze of course if it weren't for everyone on the astral express we wouldn't be able to successfully host this charmony festival thus with unanimous consent from the five major lineages Penacony's family on behalf of all family members throughout the cosmos offer a token of appreciation to the nameless Oh, sweet. Oh, I wonder if it's gonna be a big one. We will transfer ownership of the Radiant Feldspar to the Astral Express. A meager appreciation that we hope you will accept with grace. Wait, we own this airship now? The hell? Interesting. <laughs> I mean, we also get 5% of Panacone as uh, like a shareholder, so. Let us gift our applause and cheers to these brave and dauntless nameless. Nameless! 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 And now, I propose a toast to Harmony, to the Trailblaze, to the future of Panacone and the universe. And to the generous Alfalfa family head, Mr. O.T. Alfalfa. Cheers! Cheers! <laughs> to make a decision like that, this little bird is no less capable than her brother. <laughs> As well, as well. Right. But have you forgotten someone, my gray-haired friend? I put a bomb on this ship. You have ten minutes to find it. Better her. When did this get shoved into my hands? There are still so many bombs. Now's not the time for plot twists. I can't handle this alone. Time to create a group and inform everyone. Wow. <laughs> oh wait, Boot and Jedi also the group. Yeah. 
999 dollars, what the hell? Thomas also just checking it out. <laughs> Typical ratio. <laughs> I'm not surprised that ratio just pieces out. <laughs> All set. Let's start following the plan. I actually like the Sparkle's theme. Okay, uh, the punch button. Huh. Major of five, uh, should we just get just in the last chest in the place with a luxury ship? Okay, wait, I have just like two combos of Compare. Where am I actually currently on the map? On this part. There should be this one. You finally arrived, oh great gray haired little one. I'm the constable around these parts, and right now I'm posing as a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Quite blatant, but okay. I also like the Kim, you know, uh, the door is wearing. I got I wanna have this door. It's cute. Did I miss a number? Oh, silly. No matter though. I've never learned how to count before. I mean bomb demon doll has never learned how to count. <laughs> I'm not even a real bomb. Was it surprising? Shocking? Horrifying? No. Really? That's too bad, then. You really don't learn from one The concept of finding faults is silent. You open it up more like tear apart from the sound. Cool and uncovered to nature. A mere toy equipped with a remote speaker. <laughs> okay. I'm already liking this. Oh, Black Spawn also was on in on it. Uh, I spoke with the bomb situation and I've got it good news and bad news. Which one would you like first? The bad news. The bad news, I found 131 bombs. The good news is none of them are real bombs. We can know how to pull stand. The process of elimination is also a problem solving tactic. Give me some some away, the bombs are hard on the investigative trail. Keep it up, everyone. At least I made some progress. Gotta keep working at it. Why are the others doing more work than us, by the way? Oh, there's a birdie there. How am I supposed to reach it? Wait, what can I pull out? Huh. Do I... Huh. I don't know. I'm not huh. The Thermodor is a sparkle look-alike. According to the book of compilation of sparkle vocabulary in modern and com contemporary times, the term firmware was first coined in 2005 AE on the sparkle planet in the sparkle star system. Its original meaning is fluffy, 
Nowadays, the inhabitants of this barrier pattern often use firmer, specifically to refer to plush dolls. In other words, firmer doll translates to fluffy doll 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 doll. It may sound peculiar, but considering its barrier origin, it actually makes a lot of sense. The firmer doll is staring right at you. Stare back. The firmer doll continues to stare right back at you. Can you do stare back? The firmer doll is never blink. Honestly, if they did, it would be quite unsettling. <laughs> anyway, it's just an ordinary blush toy. Can you really expect it to add a single word? This point out the doll has no specific terms or exudes from within an orbit fitting a firmer doll. Not a penetrating neutron bomb. Which means there's no need to buff it anymore. It makes both you and the doll appear rather pitiful. It's best to promptly put an end to this as far as. I actually wanted to continue here to keep staring at it, but um, I clicked too fast. Dutch and Bubbaboo, I give up. What's wrong with Silver Cowboy? I found 270 talking dolls. <laughs> and it's all that got help from the hounds and that man with the plastered head. Who knows when we find them all if we look for them ourselves? That's a shame. Knowing that fools have us, I'm afraid we're going to have to keep filtering through the wrong answers. Don't fret, the beauty will guide us. Okay, the next one. Should be right over here. Ha! We meet again. I am Panacone's famed detective. Got yourself into a pickle? I'm more than happy to help. But unfortunately, I'm preoccupied with a couple of unsolved cases. So, you'll have to wait your turn. Actually, you can say quite impressive on the variety of the dolls and if they are like all talking and have like all their own characteristics. Dr. Boom Sparkle. The first case <laughs> is the Soul Glad Factory Arson case. We found a hammer, a doll, and half a liter of unidentified fluid at the scene of the crime. Our forensics results show that it's a red herring. The second case is the Blue Hour Auction Robbery. A gang of masked thugs broke in, stole a fragment at the Asheville Express, and left behind a large hammer, a doll, and a half-dead red herring at the sea. Good. <laughs> that call out. The way I see it, there must be a link between these two cases that will be the key to exposing Dr. Boom. It's a red herring. I trust in your deduction. Which piece of evidence do you think is the deciding one? Correct answer! You're good, gray hair. Your mind is pretty sharp. As you've put in so much effort, I'll throw you a bone. The bone's not here. This is only a prank I've craftily set up. Hurry, time's running out. You better find that real bone quickly. Come on. The box was faded, leaving behind the doors bodily, uh, bustling with wild noise. It seems this pitiful door was transformed into a megaphone with sparkle. My friends that bring setting news, tell us about it. The Troy of Beauty is especially dangerous. I found 145 adorable dolls, but four they were the fool's bombs. Is this really not a Troy of Elation or something? No matter what, please be patient everyone. I have a feeling that as long as our virtuous patience can proceed, it will lie with sincere conviction, even the most difficult of problems will be resolved. Mr. Chen is right, everyone, don't let your guard down. Okay, at least we almost got health. Uh, okay, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. It should be... Oh, yeah. No, it should be in the room over. Right on that table over there. Yep, there it is. Hello, lovely actor. You can call me the director doll. I often use this name in film credits. Hmm. 
If you didn't know, I'm the one who directed the entire farce in Penacone. As the leading man of the show, what did you think? Feel free to share your thoughts. But, uh... Well, actually, due to the current plot requirements, you're only allowed to say one line. So please try and resist the urge to share your thoughts. I just wanted to refuse a bomb on my guru, the one who made Sunday Warden. The action scene required to escape the family. Huh? <laughs> no way too many storyline transitions. Uh, it's all my fault for being duped by the masked fools. The screenplay was written by someone named Miss Sparkle. She said she graduated from Sparkle University's film directing and screenwriting program, so. We instantly hit it off. Who knew that there was no such thing as the film directing and screenwriting program at Sparkle University? In fact, Sparkle University isn't even real! Yeah, Sparkle! <laughs> Since you're done asking questions and I'm done answering, according to the script, I must reveal to you the fact that there's no bomb here at all, thus causing you to want to kick yourself for spending this whole time listening to me rattling on, after which you will press wait. <laughs> but don't fret, I've also prepared a gift for you. A dream bubble that has the thrilling life and death moments I shared with the beautiful memo keeper. If you haven't seen it yet, you should hurry up and look for Dr. Edward. The amateur box splash door balls affectionately to you, blowing you a kiss before bonding away, vanishing to the depths of the cabin with joyful leaves. Did we actually get a dream bubble? The ABC Special Investigation Team is wrapping up here. We found a total of 329 dolls, but no bomb. Though I tr thought I dropped this update with you guys. If you guys can't do anything about it, for the fucking shit balls, this is going to be a killer. <laughs> I like the way Bootle is getting around cursing. Don't give up, you're so close to 999. The express was also about to be done. Here yeah, with a good burger run. I'll be taking over the erect team now. Good luck everyone. Nope, we didn't get a dream bubble. Sad. No, it's not with the organ, it's like a burger at the top by the helm. Yep, there it is. Hello, I'm a bomb. There's still some time before I explode, so you can take a look around first. <laughs> we do not have this function called wait around, but it's no problem. To ease any boredom during your wait, I can play a soothing song for you. Oh, can you now? Now playing Never Give Up, Never Surrender by the trending superstar Ash Strictly from the Epsilon 12 system. <laughs> Is this Sparkle attempt at rickrolling us? <laughs> okay, I like the humor. I like the humor. Especially since this is not the first Rick War reference. <laughs> because if you if you um, look at Robin's idol dance animation, it looks quite similar to the dance of like the Rick War you see in the video of Rick um, Rick and Estley doing there. After the almost tearful exclamation of praise, aha, uh -huh, comes to pass, all that left in the doors mouth is the lingering echoes of an irritating cassette tape. Turned out that it isn't a bomb after all, but a vintage tape recorder. Interesting.
Good news, I found your remaining 127 dolls. Uh, 72 dolls here. But they're also just dolls. What's going on? That girl pulled a fast one on us. Long time to see everyone. <laughs> it's sparkle jump scary mode, alright. Miss Parker is delighted that everyone is busying themselves over here. And so she is me. Uh, she's had me deliver a message. You've grown some brains in this career. Miss Parker is pleased. Alright, enough jokes. Miss Parker says this much is super important, so listen up. There are actually 1000 dollars on the Radiant Fest, but to reward everyone's effort, Miss Parker has decided to be making this with gifty corners of the final door. Uh, why is this so fat? I'm, I'm sure you don't want everyone to know that the family's protection opening has been rendered useless. Hurry up and move with world saving heroes. Mm. Not much time left. Mm -hmm. I hope I make it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's run for it. Optional dolls. You're here because you expected bribes from the duplicitous and corrupt leader of that Sparkle Gang. The scoundrel who wants to become mayor of Sparkle City. Blazing bro! This evil city has fallen into depravity. As the sheriff doll, I cannot idly stand by and do nothing. And now, only this imaginary neutron bomb can completely cleanse Sparkle City of your ilk. Sure. If you wish to defeat me, you'll have to face off against the great Sparkle's dogs. They're my fiercely loyal companions, and you'll never defeat them. Wait, this is actually triggering a fight? Okay. Turn out your pockets. I wasn't expecting that, but good. <laughs> Just got an achievement. I didn't need, don't really know what I did for that, but hey. It's just Let's settle this. That's how it usually Destiny turns out. Destiny is an ill tidings manifest. That's half the work. Destined for oblivion. Shadow lets out a long sigh and with its exqu exquisite acting faint staff. Unfortunately, the imaginary illusion bomb is near. It's best to look elsewhere. It's a firefly. Huh. Is that firefly? It's, of course, it's in the water where it started. Twenty-eight minutes forty-six seconds. Twenty-eight minutes forty-five seconds. Uh, you're here. Thank 
the masked fools? Huh. So this really was their doing. Since you're here, I'll just keep it short. Just over half an hour ago, I received a message from an unknown sender and rushed here as soon as I could. 27 minutes, 52 seconds. 27 minutes, 51 seconds. The sweet dream has lost the protection of the order. If it were to blow up here, the consequences would be unfathomable. I've scrutinized it for a long time, but the bomb's design is incredibly unique, as if it's been locked by some mysterious path force. Apart from its creator, I fear no one knows how to deactivate it. Interesting. It's difficult. Time is running out, and she's a master of disguise. And even if we catch her, she won't come quietly. You mean the Watchmaker's guests? That's a pity. Based on my experience, I don't think any of them can turn the tide on this situation. The Memo Keeper may be able to teleport the bomb to a deserted location, but... I... I have found a note inside the doll. This is a mimetic virus.x. <laughs> okay. Warning. A mimetic virus has been blended into this imaginary neutron bomb. Mimetic life forms, particularly member keywords, especially black swan, are advised to stay clear. Otherwise, exposed individuals face a 72.36% chance of turning into a banana, 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 banana. Yes, she means business. P.S. P.S. It's true. Try if you dare. I don't know what grudges they have, but this path is a dead end too. Hmm. Actually, there might be another way. Do you still remember? The script said that I will experience death three times in the Land of Dreams. I think this moment heralds the third time. Hmm. You may already know that I have no way of evoking dreams. I employ a Stellaron Hunter special method in order to enter dreams instead. This allows me to perform feats that typical dream chasers can't. As long as I can so bear well. the pain of the memoria pressure, I'll be able to dive into the primal memory zone beyond the dream and extend a lifeline to the Radiant Feldspar. I will take this bomb into the depths of the dreamscape, as deep as possible where there are no living souls around. That way, at least no one will get hurt. Don't worry. I believe that this Firefly armor will be enough to take me to where I need to go before the countdown ends. And maybe even make it back safely. Let's hope that. At present, this is our best and most logical course of action. After all, a long story deserves a happy ending. True. I have some words to share with you. Though they were spoken to me by Miss Acheron. She said that the so-called impossible is merely something that is yet to happen. At the moment, there are so many things that seem impossible. But are they really never going to happen? Maybe it's just that the moment to disprove these impossibilities hasn't arrived yet. Whether it be a literal ending, suffering akin to death, or a harrowing deathscape. Before the appointed destination arrives, they are all the same. Yet I can still make Mary had choices. I also firmly believe that Quite interesting to hear that of Acheron, especially when everyone thought in an emulator of Nihility would be impossible, and here we are, with Acheron. That when that moment arrives for us to make a choice, the answer to our end will already be within our hearts. It is not destiny that shapes us, but we who shape destiny. The Astral Express and the Stellaron Hunters are like light and shadow. 
We walk on different paths, intertwined, moving forward and growing together. Maybe the end is predestined, but it is not today. Things are going too well. Let's speed up the countdown. Human life is short, just like fireflies to a flame. So if you have an answer in your heart, always remember, don't leave with any regrets. We have this right. Since you care so much about other people's safety, why don't you go take a closer look? <laughs> with our own goals and realize them in unimaginable ways. Regardless if the result was a sweet illusion or a bitter reality. It was an answer we longed for day and night. So, huh. why do people choose to slumber? I think it's as you said. Because in the end, we will wake up from our dreams. There was a continuity error. We already fixed up that screen. Where's Hecaron there? Uh, probably because of... When I arrived... I happened to see a child holding it. He said the flowers were prepared by Aunt Jessie for the watchmaker and the war comrade he'd missed his whole life. Mikhail would place two bunches of flowers here year after year. And after he left, it became three. Your wishes will always be remembered by someone. Now, Panacone, as you hoped, has welcomed the dawn after a long, dark night. The path forward may not be a bed of roses, but at least people are prepared to step forth towards freedom. Tiernan, you can go home now. While the Nameless are also preparing for the next stop of their voyage. But before leaving, we still have one last thing to do. A fitting end to the tale of the departed. One could not ask for a better farewell. Go on, they're all here. Looks like this is the last riddle that Mr. Gallagher left for us. In the end, we still failed to figure out his true identity, or if he was even a living person. Uh, what should I say? I mean, this guy is definitely a history fictionologist, all right. I'm suddenly reminded of the time at the theme park when he said he was only 13 years old. Could that have meant something too? Probably. Either way, he's an enigmatic character for sure. At least our journey together in Panacone was real enough. And his loyalty and love for this land must have been real too, right? Of course, this comes to play. Gallagher, <laughs> we raise a toast to you, the slumbering hound. To the festival's invitation, 
to all lies and the singular truth. If we ever meet again, please don't talk in riddles. <laughs> Everyone here talks in riddles. <laughs> Honestly, when I heard the conductor's request, I was pretty surprised. The nameless. Those who trailblaze, doing good deeds but never seeking recognition. After all this time, how would we even find those three people in such a vast place like Penacony? But it seems, in the land of the dreams, anything is indeed possible. History may not remember the names of the dead, but the stars will attest to their journeys. The first glimmer of light in the prolonged night often illuminates little, as it is fleeting in the darkness too vast. But because of this, people will remember. As long as something shines in the night sky, then when the first star falls, countless more will follow. Streaking across the horizon. Are we tossing to Brooklyn the Tiernan, Rosalina J. and Estella. We raise a toast to you, trailblazers of the Silver Rail. A toast to history that no longer remains silent. The passionate and courageous pursuit and a voyage that traverses the stars. Oh, kind of, kind of sweet. Oh, Echoron is also still there. A fitting end to the tale of the departed. One could not ask for a better farewell. Go on. They're all here. Okay, she's just repeating that was line. Sad. Yep, let's get up to Mikhail. Is the Astro Express ready to depart Penacony? Uh, apologies, Mr. Mika, that we are only now bidding you farewell. Oh, that's all right. You've all done so much for the Watchmaker, and we are forever indebted. Allow me, as the representative of Dreamflux Reef, to make another toast to all the nameless. What will the people of Dreamflux Reef do now? Many will continue to live here. Those accustomed to being awake will mostly have a hard time getting used to a life of darkness with their eyes closed. Though the order has faded, there must be someone to watch over this primal memory zone. <sighs> Penacone's nights are long. And there are many who are still far from a good night's sleep. As for the sweet dream over there... <laughs> we're still managing without it, aren't we? Mika and residents of Dreamflux Reef, we raise a toast to you. Watchers of the long dream. To your tenacity throughout time, to each sorrowful night and to the dawn that is finally upon us. Um, that looked kind of really sweet. I like this. <laughs> In the end, we still came full circle. This trailblazing expedition started from the moment you and a bellboy ran into each other. After going on a journey of many twists and turns, they still ended up where they started. Just like a clock's hands that turn round and round, the start and end of each day will always land on 12 o'clock. The advent of time moving forward. There shouldn't be much left to say. This entire adventure started because of you and should naturally end with you. And then, a new page will be turned. Mikhail Char Legwork, we raise a toast to you. Watchmaker of the Land of the Dreams, Nameless of the Astral Express. To Penacone's past, present, future, and the child's unwavering dream unto death. 
with that, our duty as nameless should be complete, right? The trailblaze can illuminate the way. But ultimately, the future of a world belongs to those who live in it. Uh, I still feel that Mr. McHale must have really wanted to witness this day himself. What's on your mind, March? Just a strange feeling. I had it a few stops ago, but it's super strong this time. Why not talk about it? Maybe everyone's thinking the same thing. I can't help but think that whether it's Mr. McHale, Mr. Tiernan, or Madame Rosalina, their lives must have been long, and they must have experienced plenty of stories. They were also young once, stumbling and bumbling around just like us, getting into scraps and mischief, that sort of stuff. Companions, enemies, journeys, adventures, all the sad and happy memories. The every day that we're used to, they have lived through them too. But those things are all in the past. Yeah, maybe that's the precise thing I can't let go of. It'll be easier to understand if I use an analogy. Like, when you're reading a book, if one of its characters keeps running into obstacles, and experiences an ending full of regrets. We're bound to feel a bit mixed about it, right? True. Because we've seen every nook and cranny of their lives, we see these people as special. So, even if there are parts of it that aren't really realistic, nor logical, we still hope that their story gets a good ending when it comes. But, what if they... and we... aren't really that special? When Mr. McHale sat in this chair, waiting for the Astral Express to arrive every day, what was he thinking? And if... At the end of his life, he could still firmly say he had no regrets. Then, what is this regret we feel in our hearts right now? Hmm. I think each and every one of us is searching for the answer to this very question. The universe is vast, and our lives are but specks. The trailblaze never ends, but against the backdrop of the cosmos, the average person's lifelong journey is merely a short stretch. But it is in this minuscule distance that paths cross and countless worlds connect. The universe may not remember every person who leaves a tie along the silver rail, but we will. As long as we remember, their stories will never end. And what Mr. McHale has left for us is his answer to this very question. It may not be perfect, but it left a smile on this storied, jaded old Nameless's face at the end of his life. And its meaning will be interpreted by those who come after... us. It's not the answer that's important, but what we can learn from others' answers, right? Just going this way to deep what trailblazing is. <laughs> sure. Uh, I'm really sorry for bringing down the vibe. Quick, Don Hung, tell us a dad joke to lighten the mood. <laughs> Why Don Hung, though? <laughs> <laughs> it's never a bad thing to reflect. One day we'll all have to face our own farewells. But before that, 
We still have a long way ahead of us together. So the most important thing right now is to tell the conductor what we saw in Penacony. Then prepare ourselves for our next trailblazing destination. I should get back to the Express. Or maybe I could say my final goodbye to Acheron. Of course we're gonna talk to Acheron. As if I would, like, leave her behind without saying anything. For me, like at this point, Acheron for me is the most intriguing character out of this. Many do it to a connection to Agamek for her, but still. Do you still remember when we first arrived in Penacony? Who would have thought our paths would cross in such a way? <laughs> Come to think of it, I didn't even get a chance to formally introduce myself. Simply put, I'm a self-annihilator who was cursed by the Nihility. My hometown was destroyed a long time ago, and the whole world was erased beneath their shadow. In order to fight against the cruel end of self-destruction, I went on a journey in search of a way to sever the chains of the Nihility. After a long and grueling search, I am convinced that my destination lies within the depths of the Dark Web, where reality and the Nihility are separate. In there lurks a secret called Device 9. One day, I'll reach it. Oh. The ocean of stars is vast. And given our destinations, I'm afraid our paths may not cross again. But the trailblazing expedition ahead is always full of unknowns. And my blade is sharp enough to sever fate. As long as we maintain our original resolve, I believe there will come a day where we will meet again. It would be highly likely that we meet again, but the most important question, have we ever met before? Ah. In that case, I must apologize for my rudeness. Do you remember when we first met? I once said you reminded me of an acquaintance. Because of the self-annihilator's curse, my memories are stripped away, blurring my past. And after our journey together, what I originally thought were familiar feelings were merely illusions. I believe this was truly our first meeting. What do you mean? It's improbable that you've crossed paths with my past self. What I mean is, there is nothing left to retrace there. Only nihility. This is interesting, but I know where this is going. I see. You've also had a similar experience? Then you should know that this me and your memory of me are not the same person. This is such a full for breaking out call to Epic Fern, and I love it. But some things will never change. <laughs> Long ago, I too was like you, with irreplaceable companions. We also embarked on journeys, making the best choices we could, whenever we could. Unfortunately, we didn't achieve the outcome we wanted. But moments like this make me feel like they never even left. In this universe, there exist countless worlds that are similar yet different, and countless people who are alike yet distinct. Again, Hong Kong picked fur theme. I too have wandered alone, encountering acquaintances on strange worlds, seeing their silhouettes overlap with my past. In your opinion, what does this déjà vu mean? A 
attachment, desire, longing. They may all be right, but they are all incomplete. I believe it's not something external, but something that originates within us. An emotion that traverses time from a certain moment of our past to reach us. Perhaps it's a source of warmth and happiness. Or maybe it brings pain and sorrow. Each time we reminisce on our past, we always seem to notice a tiny but unforgettable instant that we left behind us. Along with certain other things that remain constant throughout. That is a summary of our lives. Encapsulating everything about us in these moments. Proof of our shared path. Within them, we glimpse our own essence. And thus, we truly exist. Just like everyone in this story, hurtling onwards along the path of destiny with passion and courage for the things that breathe meaning into their lives. Set forth on your voyage without hesitation, Nameless, on the path of the trailblaze. Even if the ending has been predetermined, that's fine. There are countless things that humans cannot change. But before that, on the road towards the end, there are still many things that we can do. And because of this, the end will thus reveal a completely different meaning. This is the meaning of journey. All those things beautiful before, are still so now. And I believe it will still bloom at the end of the nihility until we meet again beneath the sun's rays. Ah, I love what you're doing with this character. God! And this literally... Worst rehearsal of Panda form there with the horns. God, I fucking love what they're doing with her character. <laughs> Jesus. Yep. The thing I actually liked the most out of all of this was really just this conversation with Echo right now. I really love this. <laughs> Oh, pom pom. There, there. Chin up, pom pom. Don't be sad. Don't cry. Wow. Your method of consolation is truly unsophisticated. Still better than just standing there like a scarecrow. <laughs> How could you say that? Don't be so mean. And while you're here, why don't you help me comfort Pom Pom? Let's give him a big hug. We told Pom Pom all about our adventure, and they suddenly started crying. I've never seen Pom Pom so sad before. <laughs> the conductor never cries. Pop Pop is never sad. Pop Pop is just, just, just angry. Yeah, angry. No matter where the express stops, you lot always manage to cause chaos. It's not even our fault. Our timetable completely ignored. If you carry on like this, the express is gonna run out of fuel. That's right. It's not because of Misha, Tiernan, Rosalina, and the rest. Whoa. Can someone just give him a big hug, please? It's okay. Oh, Pom Pom, just let it all out. Everyone, could you all take a break in the next car? Don't worry. I'll stay here with Pom Pom. But... Let's go, March.
Just give go pump him a good a fucking big hug. He's so fun. It's okay. Oh, pom pom, just let it all out. Hey, Robert. I never expected Pom Pom would be so distraught. Those three nameless must have meant a lot to Pom Pom. No one knows exactly when Pom Pom boarded the express, but one can surmise that their journey has been filled with many hellos and goodbyes. Probably more than we can imagine. The fact that they're crying so hard is probably a good sign. It proves that Pom Pom's emotions haven't become dulled by the grind of time. They still deeply cherish every nameless who has boarded the express and value every journey shared with them. Leave it to Himako. When it comes to comforting, there's no one better on the express. I guess so. <laughs> Well, they were a little emotional at the time, but I'm afraid that's not out of the question. Since you joined us, the Express has stayed longer than anticipated at every stop along the way. Uh... And to ensure that everyone always makes it back on board, Pom Pom has had no choice but to delay the warp jump schedule. I swear it's not our fault. Right? Right? I see. <laughs> no wonder I can regularly hear Pom Pom pacing anxiously up and down the corridor. Turns out Pom Pom's been silently putting in a lot of work for us. Wow. Different from typical vehicles, the Astral Express converts every trailblaze into the energy it needs to run. Ideally, as long as trailblazing expeditions continue without interruption, the Express will receive a constant flow of energy, much like a perpetual motion machine. But, because of our previous encounters, fuel is being used up much faster than expected. We can probably only pull off two more warp jumps at most. Oh. Only two more? Isn't that super risky? Oh, I don't want to become an ice cube floating around in space again. <laughs> At least you would be an Dolber ice cube. What the fuck? <laughs> when you put it like that, it doesn't actually sound too bad. But I don't even want to become an adorable ice cube floating around in space again. Which also means that we must prudently consider our next destination. Yes, uh, I've already checked the astral charts. The two nearest worlds to us are the oceanic planet of Lushaka and the agate world Melustanen. Hmm. As for which one we're headed to, that still requires a vote. Or perhaps you might consider a suggestion. Hello, Black Swan. Everyone, we meet again. It's you! Why were you just in my room? Hmm. It's a very cute room, Miss March. Just like you. Memo Keeper, let's put aside how you managed to sneak past everyone and board the Express for now. You mentioned a suggestion. I accidentally overheard how the Express obtains fuel. I just wanted to chat with everyone to see if we could work together. But now, it appears my suggestion could be the very lifeline that saves everyone. Please speak candidly. Depending on what you say, we could very well ask you to disembark. Ah, the Permanence's descendant. What a charming little dragon. Especially with those mired memories of yours. 
but I digress. If the Astral Express is in urgent need of a special trailblazing expedition to recharge its engine, have you all considered this? Perhaps your destination could be a world that even the renowned Aki Vili never reached. Curious. Should you be able to lay down a new stretch of silver rail, the Express may never have to worry about energy ever again. Trailblazing to a world that even Aki Vili has never been to? Is that possible? Continue, Memo Keeper. This destination of which you speak, what sort of world is it? A world that many across the universe don't even know exists. A world hidden away from outside observation. Its presence only revealed by the light from the mirror of the Garden of Recollection. A world fettered by three paths, its destiny hanging in the balance. The Eternal Land, Amphorius. Okay. I hope I'm not too late, child. <sighs> I wasn't expecting it to be you. Don't you know how many sentry posts the family has built? And how hard it is to get you out of here. <laughs> Looks like my time's up. What do you mean? What time? Negotiation, interrogation, or death. My fate lies entirely in your hands, Lady Bona Jade. The dance is done. Why bother with the compassionate pretense? and give someone who's about to die the chance to talk. Despite your fall from grace, you still look well. I'm very glad to see that you're so full of verve. <sighs> Do not insult my pride with half-veiled sarcasm. Have you specially come to see me just to sate your vile vanity? Oh, of course not. I merely came to fulfill your younger sister's wishes. To offer you a generous trade. That is, if you're willing to accept. Robin? To build a true haven where everyone can attain peace. That's the oath between you siblings, isn't it? If I told you there was still a chance to realize this vow, would you be willing to talk to me then? <laughs> <laughs> I recognize the gravity of this question. Which is why you don't have to answer me right now. <laughs> Go now. You are free, O oh Chosen One, who dare to exceed his bounds. Sever your wings, descend to the mortal realm, and walk their lands. See what this world is truly like. I feel like Shade is being set up to be, be doing something real bad later on. I don't know, I'm like getting that feeling. I will not accept your charity. As I mentioned earlier, it's a trade, and you don't have to give me an answer right now. Rewards are not reaped in a day, and if there's one thing I'm best at, it's waiting. The sweet dream still continues, and the night is still long. You have plenty of time to contemplate your answer. Ah, a word of advice for you before we part ways. A word of warning from someone who's been in your shoes before. Life is too short to miss out on golden opportunities. And with that, this part of the guest is done. Yeah, Buddha is resident now. And Robin. And Sparkle. Okay, we're getting a lot of visitors. I understand. Calm down. <laughs> Message.
Oh, can we do our own group photo? Oh, I see now. I mean, okay, I guess we can try to build up a group for a lot of this. Yeah, I guess I'll do it like this. <laughs> it's somewhat close, I guess. Okay. Mm. Let's see what else do we have. Get some achievements, of course. I will check out another time. We have a point of getting wages. Ah, okay, it's to she's talking about um, us being a shareholder. Only 5%. Side quest, yeah, we can oh, do this uh, some other time. Wait, is she implying Sybil Wool hired her?
Up for a minute. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> okay. If I understood this correctly right now, she's implying that Silver Wolf hired her so she will make um, like fireflies that go by smoothly. Which is interesting. And that um, Zilwolf also in turn shared her part of like Elio's script. Kinda cool. Well, okay, but with that, we have done this part of the story quest and I will leave anything else even event related for another time. <sighs> because it's actually quite late. Let's see if someone's online and we can read. Not right now, as it looks like. Let's see. Okay, still. Uh, okay. Cross where you been, see you online. Uh, who are we gonna give it to? Ooh, I like her right now. Okay, I've already figured out who I'm gonna give it to. Okay. So, with that, I hope you enjoyed this part of the story. I actually really like this kind of bit of an ending, though I expected more out of the Bong of Sparkle, though I like this little revelation in the message of like that message from the message door. What I really loved though, even though she only appeared at the end, Acheron, because she was literally calling us out. Fourth war breaking about home came back third, and I think when she called us, uh, asked us, Have we met uh, each other before? She is actually referring to the captain of home came back third, which is also actually like the actual like player, which is so cool. And like the player is a canon figure in this universe, so yeah. With that being said, I hope you liked it. I really did. Leave some feedback, leave some support, always appreciate it, and be nice over there in the raid. And with that, as always, I hope to see you again next time. Until then, bye bye.